Thanks for joining us on Motor Mouse, presented by Toyota. With Michael McDowell finding victory lane at the Indy Road Course, who had the biggest missed opportunity? And Crew Chief Steve Latart, we'll start with you. Well, I, I think missed opportunity is a little rough for a couple of the front runners because they ran well, but they definitely missed out on a chance. And for that reason, I'm going to point out the 99 of Daniel Suarez. They sit on the pole. They have great pace. And early on, I thought he had the speed to overtake the 34. They did almost everything perfectly from this pit entry where Suarez gains on the 34. Absolutely, absolutely like leapfrogs him and takes control. The problem is on the important pit stop, the most important pit stop, the final pit stop, the hose gets stuck underneath the left front tire, slowing them down dramatically. They go all the way to about 10 seconds back. He closes the gap to five or six seconds, which just proves that this car had the speed. But this pit stop right here, Jeff, is one that the 99 team and Daniel Suarez, they're going to be thinking about all week long. Yeah, Steve, it really is. And, I, you know, I have to, you know, I, I, I don't even know if it's one of those things that you look at your guy and say, hey, you messed up. Like, I, you know, sometimes things just happen. Uh, I hate to be like that because we don't take, you know, if we don't, uh, if we don't try to fix it, it, it can happen again. But I almost feel like it wasn't a mistake. It was just this weird set of circumstances where the hose reeled up in a strange way and it got caught on the splitter and and now it's a slow pit stop. Um, so, you know, I feel like they almost need to just put that behind them. Chase Elliott, you know, uh, he was in, he was in position. And if given the right track position, um, he could have won his race. I, you know, he had enough speed to win it. Uh, at times or other times he wasn't as good as he needed to be. But if that nine gets out there in the lead, the way McDowell had, I'm not so sure that he couldn't have won the race, but I will dig a little bit deeper. And Ty Gibbs, I thought in the pra in, in practice, I thought Ty Gibbs had one of the very fastest race cars on track and he ended up getting spun. It wasn't his fault. He did come back, uh, but it wasn't enough. And look at all the track position he lost right here. And on a race where it was it went green, you're not going to get it back. And so he fought and he clawed and he got a decent finish out of it. But a good opportunity with uh, with with the speed they had, we're not able to take advantage of it. So when you look at the point standings, are the guys, for example, uh, Chase Elliott and Alex Bowman, uh, guys below them, AJ Allmendinger, is it must win from here on out for those guys, 80 points and back? Well, 80 points is a must win. Ty Gibbs, I think, is a must win. And if you're Daniel Suarez, I think you need to be thinking must win. Not because you can't make up 28 points on Bubba Wallace, but because if we see another new winner, which is very possible at Watkins Glen uh, or Daytona, then instantly that leaves only the position of Kevin Harvick and Brad Keselowski. And none of these guys are catching those two drivers on points. So I think other than Kevin Harvick or Brad Keselowski, you better think you're going to have to win the race. Now, I don't know if Bubba has the firepower to do it to Glenn. He probably needs to go just have a solid run and decide what he has to do at Daytona. It may still be a must win at Daytona. Um, so no reason to put undue pressure on him this weekend. But Ty Gibbs, Suarez, Bowman, Elliott, by the way, those four drivers all had, I think, like Jeff said, speed that could have won with track position. Watkins Glen just became a very uh, focused race for those four drivers. I think it's changed the strategy for uh, Kevin Harvick and Brad Keselowski too, because you have, you just mentioned it, all the guys that can win the race uh, this weekend. Then we go to Daytona. Uh, show me a guy on the on. Show me a guy on this sheet of paper with the points on it that can't win. And so, I think if you're Brad Keselowski and and you're Kevin Harvick and you're those teams, you're in a point race. You have to assume that you're in a point race. And you better run this race at Watkins Glen accordingly. Now, the best way to get in is by winning. But I don't see, uh, so far this year, I do not see winning speed on road courses from Brad Keselowski or Kevin Harvick. Uh, I just haven't seen it. They're going to have, they have to go to this race this weekend and forget, forget anything except for what is my counterpart doing? How do I get more points than he does? Two winners and only one of those guys is getting in. And by the way, they're separated by... Two points. Two points. <laughs> yeah, so and, you better get some this weekend. Yeah, just to sum that up, uh, there is a guarantee that one driver is going to get in on points. As you mentioned, those two, Brad and Kevin, are separated by two points. If we get a winner at Watkins Glen, we get another winner at Daytona, one of those two is going to be out. Thanks for joining us on Motor Mouse, presented by Toyota. 
Hi, I'm Parker Kligerman. For more access like this from Pit Road, be sure to click and subscribe to the Motorsports on NBC YouTube channel.